Welcome back, everyone, to Pontus Fountain Hobbies. This is a season one, episode one of our uh, uh, old original D and D sort of deep dive. We're going to start out uh, in this sort of experiment, season one of O D and D. We're going to go all the way back to even before old D and D, original D and D. We're going to go to chainmail rules from medieval miniatures. Uh, we got the uh, sort of this is a copy that I had pulled off of. Uh, one of those pay sites at one point, and I had the PDFs for years. I just finally printed it out, and uh, I just wanted to kind of go through Chainmail. Uh, as you guys know, Chainmail is um, Rules for Medieval Combat by Gary Gygax. It's before um, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, really influenced Dungeons & Dragons. So I'm going to kind of go all the way back into this. Uh, we've got games based on warfare have interested men for centuries, but such games as checkers and chess prove the latter games are nothing less than the warfare of the period in which they were developed, abstracted and stylized, or played on a board. Chess is so abstracted it is barely recognizable as a war game. The other end of the spectrum, and of much more modern invention, are military miniatures. By use of figures scaled down to an inch or two in size, the player may realistically simulate warfare and are not tied to stylized board. Uh, it allows combatants to have a never-ending variety of battles and other terrain, even refighting historic actions involving tremendous armies. In order to play a war game, it's necessary to have rules, and these are the miniature rules. So, uh, in the original, in the original setup, these were actually played with a sandboard, and you can see the miniatures here on the sandboard. But yeah, kind of just going through the book, we've got chainmail rules for medieval miniatures. Uh, the call out here is to use the Airfix Robin Hood and Sheriff of Nottingham 25 millimeter plastic figures. What I did is I picked up a, a huge set of uh, some uh, very inexpensive miniatures, uh, so just some plastic knockoffs. If you go to pick up the Air, Air Fix miniatures, they're, they're quite expensive. So I just got, I, I thought of this as the way to really inexpensively get into tabletop gaming. You know, there's there's a Warcraft out there, there's a Song of Ice and Fire, but I wanted to do the experiment of let's just go through and set this up with some random miniatures. I'll probably paint the miniatures, so I'm going to get some miniatures. I'm going to get these miniatures. I'll show you in a bit. We'll Zenithal prime them, get them prepared to uh, get them tabletop ready. But you can see here in the um, notes here, we've got, first off, we've got the turn sequence, move, counter, move system. Both opponents roll a die. Side that moves first, moves its figures and passes any split moves and missile fire. The side is the last move now moves its figures and makes any split moves and missile fire. Artillery fire, missile fire, melees are resolved. Uh, steps one through six are repeated. That's for the move, counter move system. Then you have the simultaneous move system where both sides write orders for each of their units. Both sides move their units according to the written orders. Artillery fire, missile fire, melees. We have morale checks, which is sort of like panic, right? There's terrain types, hill, wooded, marshy, rough terrain. And then we have the different kind of uh, miniatures. So what I'm going to do is as I paint through this army, I'm going to kind of use this as an exercise to... Um, Look at these miniatures, catalog the different types, and then I'll come up with our armies. But you have armored foot, heavy foot, um, which I think I'll call like uh, light and heavy infantry, uh, archers, longbowmen, uh, horse, catapult wagons. Uh, then there's fatigue, missile fire, rate of fire, split moves and fire catapults, weapons, gunpowder, post-melee morale. We'll kind of read through these as we get to the turns. So I guess my idea is here, we're gonna, I'm going to come up with, um, I'll come up with some historical uh, scenario to play. I believe that, you know, if you even look at the introductions, as forces to be pitted against each other can be drawn from historical accounts. They write, it says morale is checked. Finally, determine if the battle is over and the side awarded the laurels of victory. This game, I believe, is played mostly with six-sided dice. So I'll get a bunch of six-sided dice out on the table, too. I've got some, some massive amounts of these six-sided dice we can play with. 
And yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those miniatures out of the table. I'm gonna Zenithal prime them and then we'll kind of take a, a first pass through the minis and then um, get some, uh, I'll start working on what the scenario we're gonna play for, the, for this first chain mount. I'll look through some historical battles and figure out maybe something from Joan of Arc. I don't know, let me, let me think of uh, something. But yeah, so let's go into doing some painting and I'll get back to you guys. I know a lot of people go out there and pick up the actual Airfix uh, miniatures or try to. If you, if you see them out on, on eBay, they're quite expensive. I think that they go for hundreds of dollars. The Airfix Robin Hood, 40 millimeter scale. They have, uh, it says the L LGSTA medieval miniature rules were de developed primarily for Elastolin and Starlux figures. However, you may be used with the Airfix Robin Hood and Sheriff of Nottingham, 25 meters. So I'm just taking these inexpensive Chinese uh, uh, sort of army figures. They're all kind of knights and soldier figures. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Zenithal prime them here. I'll prime them with a flat black first. Then I'm gonna hit them with a spritz of uh, like a metallic. I got a spray chrome. So I can kind of hit them as knights right off the bat and just get them looking like, I didn't tape these down so you notice that the miniatures are flying all over the place. So yeah, you know, you can do it the right way, but, or you can do it my way. I'm just kind of trying to hit them from <laughs> above, and uh, you see miniatures flying everywhere. It's okay. It's, uh, I'm trying to do this fast, but in, uh, but anyway, yeah, so if you go, go out to eBay, you can check up those Airfix. They do look kind of cool. Um, I, I'm going more for the idea of, hey, for, you know, I think I picked up these miniatures for uh, maybe two or three dollars, right? Kind of a wish.com sort of deal on Lazada. And you know you, you you buy you buy the PDF for a few bucks. You print out your own copy. You, you get your own miniatures, and you can be in playing a tabletop uh, tabletop game for probably under ten dollars. So yeah, just you know just just the idea. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit these with the black. Then I'm gonna spray them with the chrome spray. Most of this army set that I've got is are they are um, they're knights, so they've got some form of armor. So I think that this uh, this bright silver can can act as the as the armor plating. And you see, you just hit them kind of at a 45 degree angle, except when you blow them over, and uh, it'll just highlight their armor, and that'll get me 80 percent of them painted. And then I can just hit them with some kind of you know something that characterizes them as one army or the other. I rotate these around too, just so I hit it from both sides. Uh, this way you can kind of get the shadow effect, get some armor coverage, and also you can kind of leave some of that black for the shadow work underneath. Now once these are done, I'm gonna get them inside, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of I'm going to kind of put together a campaign, maybe for the next video, of what, the, uh, what, what battle we're going to try to reproduce here. And then I'll figure out, you know, I think that uh, uh, in the rule book, I think on page six, they've got some um, indication, like a 300-point army. So, you know, we'll come up with some kind of 300-point army schema. But what I'll do is I'll split these up into heavy in infantry, light infantry, uh, archers maybe some knights, maybe some leaders, some hero kind of figures. And then from there, I can break them out into the, uh, to the army. So I think a lot of this is just the prep to get to chainmail first, but I'm just getting my miniature army set. And, uh, and then I'll probably do some custom painting next video and we'll work through the scenarios by next video. So here's a quick flyover, just to guide, guide, get you guys across the different minis. Lots of cool minis for this inexpensive, toy soldier kind of pack of, of miniatures. I, th I think they look cool. I uh, can't wait to get these on the tabletop. So yeah, while we get the, uh, while we get the miniatures painted, I plan for next round, what I'll do is I'll, I'll come up with the army divisions. I'll come up with the scenario for the armies and then we'll go more through the rules. Um, I'll divide them up into light foot, heavy foot, um, maybe knights, uh, and, and longbowmen and archers. You know, there's a there's a thing here that says English lowbow longbowmen. These troops can carry long stakes, which they firmly set in the ground, prevent cavalry attacks. Longbowmen position for two complete turns are therefore considered to have planted their stakes. Any cavalry attacking them from the front must roll the die for each figure in the front rank. 
Four to six indicates the horse is impaled and the rider slain. This is for cavalry uh, attacks. So, so yeah, we can go with something like that. Uh, maybe maybe we'll do something with the um, Hundred Years' War, like I mentioned. And as we kind of go set it up, we'll just work our way through the rules. Uh, and then maybe we'll even get into a round of man-to-man -man combat at some point. The rules for that are in here. And there's even jousting rules in here. Uh, and finally, there's the fantasy supplement. I just printed all of these things together in this one version. You got the combat tables in here, jousting matrix. Maybe we'll take the we'll do a jousting version too at some point. So yeah, so that's uh, episode one. Come back for episode two. Uh, before you guys head out, uh, we've got a bookstore link down in the description. You want to check out our uh, our bookstore. To, it's a sponsor for the channel. We've got the Cat Two Journals out of Lovecraft's Providence. This is collecting the six volumes including August Moldenhauer's a three volume Catu Journals out of Lovecraft's Providence and Giuseppe Balsamo's Disclosure from the Necronomicon uh, fragment including Necromancy of Nyarlathotep go check out the bookstore link you can check out our Patreon below uh, if you like what we're doing here and we'll see you in episode two thanks for watching you can click there bye bye